So now that the Flowbox is installed, uh, we're ready to start up this system uh, with a BP6010 pump, so we're going to turn on feed water. And we're going to open up our drain valve a little bit. And then we're simply going to turn on the booster pump. Now you'll notice I opened the drain valve up and the drain flow meter is almost pegged. This RO is in flush mode, it's flushing. Now you can see the bubbles coming up through the permeate side. And now we're going to bring the drain, we're going to start closing off the drain flow meter and make these flow meters even and bring it down to one to one. So now that we're at a, a ratio of one to one, I like to run a little more drain water than permeate, so I'm going to open up the drain just a little bit. And you'll notice my pump pressure probably changed. So I'm going to take my screwdriver and, and adjust my pump pressure to 150 PSI. And I'm going to spin this around so I can see it. I'm at 1.2. At one point two gallons a minute. So we're making about 1.2 gallons a minute. Uh, at 100, oh, we're at about 145, uh, 148 psi. So 1.2 times 1440, which is how many minutes are in a day. Is 1728 gallons a day. So at about 100, we're at 140 PSI, uh, we're making 1,728 gallons a day. Now our feed water is a little warm right now, so we're not going to get it up to 150. We have uh, incredibly warm feed water in Southern California here in the middle of summer. It's about 80 degrees. Uh, and so what we were talking about earlier, seasonal temperature effect, uh, we won't even get it to 150. We're at about 140, 145. So as the water cools down now, uh, moving into autumn, we'll find that our pressure is, this pump will be capable of putting it over 200, which we don't want to do. Uh, and so at 150, this RO will put out about 1.3 gallons a minute on a new membrane. 1.3 times 1440 is 1,872 gallons a day. Now to flush with the flow box, you simply turn the valve to the left, and you're in flush mode, and you're sending high pressure water through the membrane, purging out some buildup and pollutants. One thing I do want to show you. Notice when you enter a flush mode that the pressure on the gauge goes down. That's because more water is being allowed through the system. So the pressure goes down on the pump. And when you go back to normal operation, the pressure will go back up. So every time you adjust your ratio to whatever you want to run this system at, one to one, two to one, you have to adjust your pump pressure accordingly. Our water is really warm today. I have a ratio of one to one on the flow meters, uh, but our feed water is about 81 degrees, which is really, really warm here in Southern California. We just got through a heat wave. Uh, and when water's warm, uh, it's easier to move through the membrane and then the pressures become lower on the whole system. So uh, our pump is maxed out at about 134 PSI, 135 uh, with 80, 81 degree water. And we're putting out about 1.2 gallons a minute. And 1.2 times 1440 is about 1,728 gallons per day. Uh, if I was running at 150 PSI, which I'll be able to do when this water cools down in uh, a few weeks, we'll be uh, just over 1.4 gallons a minute on a brand new GXM 1000 HF high flow membrane. And that'll bring us to just over 2,000 gallons per day. So you can see, I wouldn't be able to know any of this stuff unless I had a flow box and I could read the flow meters and see accurately uh, exactly how much water I'm flowing. Now I'm going to show you artificially by turning the pump pressure down uh, how you can read this RO meter. So let's say 
Uh, here's a brand new membrane, middle of summer. And then six, seven months down the road, I notice my flow meters are much lower. And I'm going to do this artificially by turning the pump pressure down. So now I moved from 1.2 gallons a minute down to 0.9 gallons a minute. So what I can do is take a piece of paper and keep a log of my RO system, which is always, great, always a great thing to do. And when I put a new membrane in, uh, at some point in time I change the filters on this thing or I buy a brand new one, write down how many gallons a day it's making at 150 or whatever pressure you're running it at. If my machine is making 1.2 gallons a day, I write it down on a log, I can keep it tucked away back here. Six, seven months later I look at it and I'm down to 0.9 gallons a day. Uh, I know I've lost 0.7 gallons a day. Uh, and I can guess that another six months I'm going to lose another 0.7 gallons a day. Uh, so that is how you read a flow box. So keeping a little log is imperative uh, and watching the flow meters and checking them weekly or monthly. There's not much to, that could go wrong with the flow box, really. But there's a few points we can talk about because a lot of questions come up recurringly and uh, I want to bring them up. One is that the drain flow meter can get cloudy. And this happens because it's sort of the, uh, well, it's the drain passage of the reverse osmosis machine. All of the pollutants are going through the drain flow meter. All the beautiful, clean filter water is going through the permeate flow meter. So over time, uh, scale can build up in this flow meter and turn it a little cloudy. You can also see scale forming in it real time if you close off the race ratio too much. You'll see the, the RO pushing all the scale up here and you'll see cloudy in real time as well. Another thing that can happen, I'm gonna flush it a little bit here. Another thing that can happen is this, if you keep this uh, machine like in a, in a room with a lot of bright uh, grow lights or sunshine aiming right on it, you can get some algae forming in these because water in the presence of sunlight uh, breeds algae. So you don't really want to keep these in direct sunlight or under grow lights. So, uh, but you can, if these things do get cloudy or scale up, you can unscrew the cap on the top here. You can remove the stainless rod and you can use Q-tips, long Q-tips and scrub it out, clean it out. You can also just replace them. They're not that expensive from us as replacements. Uh, but that's something that comes up. Now we're gonna talk about something else that comes up. There is one interesting thing about a flow box. That is because you can adjust the ratio so dramatically now, uh, you could run out of feed water if you don't have enough pressure and your pump could start cycling. And people call me and they don't, they don't understand what's going on and we're gonna show you what, what's happening. So I've reduced our feed water pressure here to kind of show you what happens in a low pressure situation. Now, if you have a low pressure situation and you're getting this pump cycling, you can always increase the diameter of the tubing that's feeding the RO system. Increase your feed water piping supply. Uh, again, I, I hooked it up with half inch RO tubing here to kind of demonstrate a low pressure condition, but in reality, I would never hook uh, one of these RO systems up with half inch RO tubing. I would use three quarter inch schedule 80 or uh, three quarter inch to one inch CTS quick connect stuff. Um, the bigger the tubing, the better on the feed water side. Okay, so let's turn it on. This RO has a low pressure feed water condition. I've artificially manipulated it. And I'm running at about 18 PSI, which is getting really close to the cutoff point, which is around 10 PSI. Now what happens is, if somebody turns a sink on, flushes a toilet, uh, or I go to flush this machine, I could lose, I only have eight PSI of headroom, and the pump is gonna cut off because it has a low pressure cutoff switch. And there my pressure goes down and jumps up. Now my pump is cycling. Because all the water is going to drain and I don't have enough feed water to run this pump. There's two things you can do. One, turn the pump pressure down. So we're just going to unwind it.
and it's still not enough, you see? So if I close off the drain, the waste ratio again though, then my pressure holds. And what we're trying to show you here is that if you're running too close to the cutoff point, opening up the drain valve or any disturbance in the water supply in the building, like we said, sinks, toilets, so forth, uh, will send this into cutoff mode and cycle the pump. And we don't want that to happen. So uh, there's only two remedies. Turn the pump pressure down. And if that doesn't work, you need to increase the feed water supply to this RO. So that's one thing that can happen.